This is the story of one of New Zealand's most disliked police cars, how it ended up in a damaged car auction, and how I came upon it and ended up fixing it up. So buckle up, enjoy the ride, and hope you enjoy. The story starts with this police car in 2017 when it was put to work in Wellington. Then COVID hit and it was fitted with a Perspex divider and sent north to enforce an imaginary border to keep the virus in Auckland. Things were going fine until people started to get sick of the borders. Wind up! Go up! Why not go up? To your feet! Eat Mark Lewis or CC Cuts! Enjoy your feed, that's kind of nice. Hmm, not sure if I'd really want to eat a dog's fur, and apparently these guys are sausages. To your feed! Eat the yeah, that's our car there. Sometime later, this car was reassigned back to Wellington to swell the ranks for something else that was going on in the country at the time. This. What started as a peaceful protest against COVID mandates ended up as an occupation. Then the police were brought in from all over the country to break it up. It didn't end well. Things didn't go great for the police car either. Apparently reversing at 100 k's an hour will kind of destroy your transmission. Fast forward to 2023 and basically the police got rid of the car. Um, it probably was past its use by date, uh, had a few things going wrong with it, it was smoking, it was misfiring and it was failing under load, which is uh, when I came across it in the damaged car auction and thought what a great challenge. I guess the first thing that makes this really obvious that it's a police car, so you've got a uh, aerial at the back, the second one here, and you've got the uh, these this wiring here, which is normally for the rock, the uh, the light bar. So here in the interior, we can see where there's a plate mounted where the uh, speed catcher sits. Going further down, you've got these screw holes here where the uh, RT bracket sit, right? sit in that point, and then this rubber piece is always um, missing. And that's where another switch panel for the light sits. So these switches here, um, they hardly ever work. I think these ones probably do, but the definitely the volume and this one here don't work. Uh, it's because they're uh, reassigned to uh, different functionality once the police install their gear in. I believe you know this is siren on and off or something like that, and uh, switching RT uh, stations. I believe I'm not too sure about that, but yeah. Uh, some people will actually go and change these switches out and say, oh yeah, the switches aren't working, I'll go change them, but it's actually not that. Um, underneath here is where the wiring has sort of been altered and cut into, and so to remedy that, to make those switches work again, we have to take this apart and uh, reassign that wiring. And I'll show that a bit later. So here, just on the passenger side, we've got some of the um, this loom here, and that goes to the to the rear. Uh, that's all been sort of removed and, and cut out and stuff. Um, we will have to redo these wires here and hook them back into the into the factory harness um, because that's actually for the speaker here. And so they reroute that for their own RT to sort of come out of that speaker. Also on the passenger side, we've got these four holes here. And that's normally where a, um, a cabinet or a Glock pistol sits, and so that's normally secured in this point. Another thing that's interesting about these um, New Zealand cop cars is this this sort of interior panel in the boot has been uh, cut away, and normally a uh, second battery or auxiliary battery is just mounted in here. Now this particular one here, there's a, there's a bit of water. And what I've found is, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but up there you can actually see, oh yeah, you can see light there. So what's happened is there's been a um, some damage on this rear corner. If I close this up, it's a little bit of a gap there. So um, 
what I'm going to have to do is pull that light out and push the panel out from behind there. I mean, these things see a bit of action. Uh, they try and do a good job to fix them up, but obviously they don't do a perfect job because they, you know, they are working cars. Um, there's always a full-size spare, which is cool. In a New Zealand police car, the uh, the person getting picked up will normally sit here. So if you're going to find anything in this car, you're likely to find it on this side. Someone's someone's fake fake fingernail. Okay, these are cool. So road to zero so these are lollipops that cops give out at um road stops so if you're not speeding they might pull you up and go say hey good job here's a here's a lollipop for you so you know that's cool obviously someone's had a few lollipops now these are um sort of blow in the bag um nozzles so after you finish blowing into the bag if you've sort of been suspected of you know drunk driving or not even uh They'll give this back to you there's a couple of them it's pretty cool and uh more interestingly on this one here it's got which isn't that common you've got these mounting points for the cage and so this particular one here should be something under and these bolts here so this particular car or i know you've called it like a covid car or what have you had a perspex shield which came up and then mounted to the, the ceiling and pretty uncommon to see that actually okay so under the bonnet it's a three liter v6 uh, standard for the evoke um, so here we go custom fleet uh, none of the police cars are owned by the new zealand police or the government they are leased so they're leased from custom fleet and if we have a look at the tag here fe2 so the suspension has is an fe2 so same suspension as the sv6 uh fitted to an evoke uh another uh, key feature that makes this a police car is that it has a limited slip diff uh fitted in the rear as well which uh is not standard on an evoke <laughs> 